It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, and hi, it's mm. Erin. She's the executive director of Higher Things, mocking me relentlessly. Wait, you said we were going to do that, right? Let's do that. Mm. Come on, where's yours? I did it. I didn't hear it. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. Lies. Carry on. We're talking about. Oh, that's me. All or nothing fallacy today. <laughs> that's my so, cue. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of soft serving it to you. Um, but but uh, we're, yeah. No, I wasn't. It can only be one of those two things. <laughs> Look what you did. I'm hey, trying. I'm giving the definitions today. All right. Define it. Go. All right. So um, this one has a lot of different names. Uh, the all or nothing fallacy can be the either or or the false dilemma. Um, what else has it got? False choice, uh, black and white thinking, um, excluded middle, no middle ground, polarization. There's so many terms for this. Apparently, it's a real problem. We just did the middle ground fallacy. So this we is just did. We this just is the did. opposite of that. Yeah, this basically. Yeah. So what it is, is um, a faulty argument that's based on the idea, the, the false idea, um, where I'm going to limit what options are available and offer you only two. Right. So last time we said that it has to be in the middle and no one side can be right. right this time right. We're, we're sort of saying that it can't be in the middle and one side absolutely has to be right. And that's right. problematic when, well, if I tell you it is Tuesday and you tell me it is Thursday, what if it actually is Wednesday? Right. Now I used to, I used to use this a lot on my children when they were small, like, because I would like, because I wanted them to do what I wanted to do. So I'd offer them two choices, very effective with two-year-olds friends, but <laughs> sometimes church workers, um, <laughs> but, but it does not work when we start using our brain and getting really into higher order thinking skills. So you'll hear stuff like this in politics. You'll hear it everywhere. So an example of this would be like, we can either stop driving gas cars or we can destroy the earth. Mm. See where that like, let me, let me give you another one. Let me give you a Santa Claus one. I'm going to give you a few examples. St. Saint, Saint Nicholas clearly existed. So why are you suggesting he does not descend chimneys in a red suit at, on Christmas Eve? I like that. Um, here's another one. Here's kind of a churchy one. Hey, I thought you were a good person, but you weren't at church today. So what you're doing then is you're, you're, you're basically, um, grabbing hold of something that is right to point to something that is wrong. Um, that, mm -hmm. that like you just can't defend well. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a clever little thing. So I, I know that it can't be this. So that means it must be this thing that I have, even if, if mm -hmm. my thing is, is wrong. So we can go through some of these. So um, yeah. first, we'll talk about you know what it is to be a good person. Uh, let's instead maybe talk about what it is to be a baptized person, a forgiven person. That's right. And that means you're a sinner that Jesus died for. Um, and so you're right. I wasn't in church on Sunday. But well, first and foremost, Jesus died for me. I'm baptized. My, my good has to come from him, not me. And I might have just been in the hospital. Um, right, right. If uh, St. Nicholas was a person, and he was, he 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 is in, in heaven resting from his labors right now, waiting the resurrection. Um, I don't know where your presents are coming from, and I'm not going to spoil it in front of your parents. Uh, but mm -hmm. I know that uh, St. Nicholas is uh, with our Lord. Or yeah. Um, yeah. if you don't have an electric car, the planet will immediately implode. We can sort of, again, recognize that Maybe some things are better for the environment than others, but uh, I, I don't know that my particular thing will be the thing that breaks the camel's back here. Can we talk about this with a little more nuance? Yeah. I was just going to use that word nuance. This is one that doesn't allow for any nuance. And nuance isn't a, a necessarily a bad thing. It's just, again, I think a lot of these fallacies are pointing at lazy thinking, right? It's easier to, to present two choices and to select one. Um, particularly, you know, I mean, when, like I said, it's just easier. It's lazier thing. It, it's lazy thinking, right? Um, this and that lets you not have nuance, and that's huge right yeah. now. Nobody wants yeah. to think nuance. This is how you get canceled when you don't use nuance to think. Well, uh, and it's one of those things, though, um, where I can say nobody uses nuance to think, and that's a, a nuanced statement. That's an extreme, um, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, right. It's also, it's how Twitter works. It's how politics work. It's it's how we we tend to argue with each other. Is we just sort of entrench in farther and farther apart positions. And uh, if that's the case, um, you can't acknowledge that uh, there might be strengths to somebody else's argument, even if they're not right. Um, 
Right. Or there may be pieces to the argument, right? Um, maybe it's good to try to stop using gas cards. I'm, I'm not a science. I know there's science that recommends that we need to potentially start looking at alternative options, right? So there is a piece of this that is true, right? Um, but it doesn't mean the whole statement is true. It doesn't mean that that alone is destroying the earth. I'm pretty sure there are some other things that are not good for the environment mm. going on. So how then can we introduce nuance to arguments that it doesn't seem to be welcome in? <laughs> That's a good question, Pastor. How should we do that? Let's give it. Let's let's. Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, theological argument can we do? You talked well, about, about the. So I, I can go to the extremes then. So um, we just got back from conference a couple of weeks ago. Um, we're we're recovering from it now. Um, we chanted through that. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. It, it slowed my ADHD down. It helped me pay attention to the fact that something really weird was going on because nobody actually talks that way. Like I've never ordered a pizza like, hey, how's it going? Let me get an extra large pizza with extra cheese. I'm um, like, nobody does that. I will pay I, for your pizza if you do that next time. The staff's out to lunch. I will. Yeah. Bet. Um, <laughs> so, so we will do it sometimes, not all or nothing. Um, <laughs> right. It's nuanced. Okay, okay. But you could <laughs> yeah. say then, hypothetically, yeah. um, so you're not a real Christian or a real Lutheran if you just speak the language. Right, right. And so I can say, like, there are reasons that we chanted. I I, I think that it's it's a valuable thing because it, it did. It slowed me down. It made me pay attention mm -hmm. to the words that I would mm -hmm. normally skip over. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it pointed to me that something special and kind of weird is happening because God is there forgiving my sins. Um, but can it work if it's spoken? Yes. Yes, we'll absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. There's nowhere, there's nowhere in the Bible that commands that we chant all things in church. Right. And when I make an all or nothing statement to, to try and avoid that nuance, because I don't want to give, um, really what I have to acknowledge is this might be a more complex argument than, than right and wrong. Uh, there, there might be a, a good practice and, and, and a, 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 um, a, a practice that might not fit at that moment, but also recognize like, well, what if your voice cracks every 15 seconds when you chant and you sound like a 12 year old boy, um, mm -hmm. that Happens. might not to me. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so what, what then can we do to talk about this in, in a larger scale? We can say, all right, so I recognize that there's a, a, a reason that you're doing it. Can you recognize there might be a reason that I'm not? And then we yeah. can talk about this as if they're, uh, as the, the thing and uh, our, our, our aim, the thing that we're targeting on is how can we best share God's word and sacraments with those in need of it? And I think, I think you've struck on something. All or nothing arguments are inherently divisive. It's going to draw a line, I think, unnecessarily that you must stand on one side or the other. Um, and as Christians, we we don't want to do that. That that's not necessary. There's a, there's a better, more loving way to interact with our neighbor. And a lot of times, um, there there are just circumstances where maybe not all the information is understood or known. In the in the case of chanting, that's a great example. Why do we do that? Do we have to do it? Well, no. But this is why we get to do it. It's gift. Why is it gift? Because it delivers the gospel to us. Um, you think about it that way, you might think a little differently about chanting. Sure. And that that's um, to grab hold of last week's podcast, too. There are some things we can't bend on. Um, yes. You know, Christ is risen from the grave. There, there is no compromise. There is no middle ground there that this is just a true statement. Um, but what we're talking about here, then, is how to, to best live our lives in light of a, a, an imperfect world. So um, we can't simply always exist in the extremes here. Um, and so if Christ is risen from the dead, you even get this with early Christians. Well, then why don't you just drown yourself in the baptismal font and go straight to the resurrection? Well, yeah. lots of reasons. That's, that's yeah. first of all, a very biased, unpolarizing unpol uh, position that also neglects the fact that God commands a love of life, that, that God actually right. gives us neighbors to serve here. And so both can be true. And if you just want to root yourself in that farthest little corner of practice, well, then you're going to make a bad all or nothing argument. Absolutely. And you're not going to be able to love and serve your neighbor well with it. And your, and your neighbor needs you. That's true. That true. Hey, we do this. Good at this. <laughs> or we're terrible. One or the other. Nothing in between. Bye. Bye.